So one of the one of the things we keep a close eye on, of course, on our farm are expenses, <laughs> and uh, one of the always always in the top five expenses is fertilizer, especially nitrogen. So we're always looking for ways to either reduce our price that we pay for that or to reduce how much we use. <clears throat> and it's, it's pretty obvious that, a, that a, one way to do that is to increase your soil health, increase your organic matter, increase your nutrient holding capacity. Um, so uh, we've been keeping track of our uh, soil tests, which we've been taking on our fields every th three to five years for decades. Uh, it's a great way to kind of uh, field truth or ground truth what, what we're doing to see if what we're doing actually is translating into better numbers. And uh, since we've started using uh, cover crops, the uh, soil organic matter has gradually finally started to creep up again. Uh, we got a pretty good bump in organic matter when we went no-till, that plateaued, and then when we started using cover crops, it started to bump up slowly again. So we've gone from, oh, in the early to mid 90s, 3% uh, organic matter now up around 4 to 5% in some areas. Yeah, so one of the things that we've been keeping track of also in addition to our expenses are our crop yields. <clears throat> and soybean, for whatever reason, our soybean yields have not kept <laughs> pace with the increase, national average increase, or even with the increase we've seen in our corn. So one thing that hasn't kept or one thing that has kept going up then, of course, is your input costs, specifically your potassium and your phosphorus. And so uh, at that point, we have a choice. We either keep fertilizing for higher and higher yields that we're not getting, or you start cutting down on your inputs or finding ways to substitute some of those inputs uh, instead of having, having to buy them. And really, um, from the soil tests, we're seeing that our, our P and K levels typically now are high to very high without uh, the fertilization levels that we used to use. We still do fertilize on a uh, percent of yield uh, basis, if that makes sense. Iowa State has some tables that say if you, if you yield 60 bushel beans, then you need to replace 80% of however much K the, the beans used. And we've been dropping that percentage gradually over the years as we become more confident in uh, our soil's ability to, pr to provide that for us. So over the years, uh, we haven't seen the, the, yield, the, the yield for our soybeans increase like the national average has seen. Uh, but of course, the, the price for inputs keeps going up steadily and predictably. And the price that we get for beans is feast or famine usually. Uh, so one of the ways to reduce that volatility in, that, uh, in those nutrient costs is to uh, help our soil produce that naturally, or, or, or at least to um, help our soil feed our crop those nutrients more efficiently.